Hey, welcome back everybody. So in a fairly recent video, I showed you my new Marlin 1894 lever action rifle. This one in 45 Colt. And as I mentioned in that video, this is the limited edition version. So a little bit of an upgraded finish. And uh, as you can see, I'm holding it here in my hand, uh, just a beautiful rifle. So in this video, I wanted to give you just a little bit of a closer look and maybe just explore the, uh, the inner workings without taking it apart uh, of this Marlin side eject lever action rifle as opposed to uh, a, Mar uh, a Winchester or a Kiapa Model 1892, which are uh, a top eject. So first of all, let's maybe just jump into the rifle a little bit and uh, I'll go through some of the features and then I'll compare it a little bit to uh, some of the other rifles I've got here. So first of all, as I mentioned, limited edition. We've got uh, beautiful engraving on the rifle, nicely finished walnut stock, nice deep uh, checkering on this, a metal four end cap, octagon barrel, got a marbles gold bead front sight, adjustable rear sight, and uh, as I said, nicely finished walnut stock. So maybe just a couple of observations on this rifle before I kind of get into the, the workings of it. And, and this isn't to be uh, critical per se, but I'll just throw some things out as I see them. They're, as I said, more personal uh, observations than, let's say, criticisms of the rifle. First of all, uh, high gloss finish. Uh, the other rifles that I've got are a matte finish. So that's gonna kind of boil down to per personal preference. Um, you know, I think a high gloss is going to scratch a little bit easier, a little bit tougher to uh, oil or, uh, you know, lightly remove some marks. So high gloss. Uh, checkering. You know, my other rifles are uncheckered and I had an option uh, or an opportunity to buy an Uberti 1873 uh, in 45 Colt. And I passed that one up because it had checkering, which, you know, it was actual a little bit of an upgrade. But I personally kind of prefer no checkering on these, uh, you know, vintage style rifles. So that's personal preference. But uh, in any case, it's very nicely done. Uh, butt plate on the Marlin is plastic as opposed to the metal plates that are on the Kiapa and the Winchester. So, uh, you know, for the upgrades on this rifle, a little bit surprising there. Um, you know, the other thing is that uh, th this is kind of a, a, a weird thing. Normally when I, uh, you know, come back from a trip and I had this one out in the mountains, I'll take it out of the case and, uh, you know, kind of clean it up oil a little bit and uh and and put it away back in the safe now it was coming back out to uh to work here and so i just literally put that in the truck and it's been in the truck for uh let's say four or five days i was kind of surprised today and and i didn't leave it that way because honestly it, it i was just like oh my gosh um thin film and coat of uh, very light rust all over uh the entire um action barrel uh, lever, you name it, if it had metal, it had a thin coat of rust on it. So that was a little bit surprising. The, the Winchester and the Kiapa were in the truck for the same length of time and, and nothing on either of those rifles. And that being said, I, I had actually previously um, oiled this one and, and given it a, a bit of a spray with the G96 is what I use. And uh, that was before I went out in the mountains. So it was kind of, a, it had a protect, protective film on it when I was out there. I, I had seen no rain whatsoever. It was a beautiful sunny day like this one. Uh, and yet we've got kind of a thin finish of, of rust on the rifle here today. So wipe that all down. And again, it was just kind of a surface rust dust, if you want to call it that. So that was interesting. Uh, a couple other observations with, with this uh, Marlin. Um, you know, one of the criticisms of, of Marlin rifles have been that they kind of shoot all over the place. And I was very skeptical when I read that. But I can tell you kind of shooting firsthand here, um, I've got a little bit of that happening with this. Uh, you know, it's 45 Colt. Uh, not that that should really make any difference. So I really haven't been able to, to nail down a bullet that it likes, a load that it likes. Um, you know, I'm kind of, I'm chasing my sights all over the place. And I have not experienced that with either the Winchester or the Kiapa. Basically, whatever I put in them within, you know, an inch or two at, uh, say, you know, 25, 35 yards, uh, it's it's bang on it's and it's consistent. Still chasing the, the sights on this one a little bit. Not sure what's up with that. Uh, 
you know, not uh, not really impressed with the rear sight on this. Kind of a thin pot metal. Uh, I'll, I'll show that to you there. And um, like I said, not the sight itself is okay. It's it's the uh, it's the ramp that uh, I'm I'm not impressed with there. I don't know if that'll focus for you. But uh, maybe we'll get into that a little bit more uh, in a couple of minutes. You know, you know, other than that, I've had no issues uh, feeding, functioning, uh, anything like that with the rifle. So um, maybe one other nitpick on this one. The, the trigger, so sharp on the bottom corners that I could almost literally uh, cut the tip of my finger. And I, I'm the kind of person, everybody a little bit personal preference there, but... I'm on it with the tip of my finger and I'm usually a little bit closer to the bottom of the trigger uh, I'll just grip it with the left hand for you, but I'm kind of tend to be more down there And this is a very short trigger as opposed to the Winchester or the the Kiapa so um, Smaller trigger well Also here, so I find myself kind of more at the bottom end of that so uh, that's something that I'll have to take care of with just a uh, uh, a little bit of a, a, a buff up um, Literally so so that it's a little easier on the tip of my finger. So those are some nitpicks of the rifle uh, Other than that, you know pretty cool to be using a little bit of a different action here the Marlin 1894 versus the Winchester 92, you know both of these actions were developed uh, around the same time. We got uh, LL Hepburn Patent this one on August 1st, 1893, and I think it's August uh, 3rd or 4th today. So uh, I worked it out if I remember 126 years uh, this action. And so when you compare the uh, the Marlin 1894 to the the Winchester 94, the Winchester 92, tons of history. And um, you know, and these rifles have been around for like I said, 125, six, seven years, and uh, and here we are still using them today. So uh, Marlin side eject. That's one thing that's very cool about this rifle. It's got a, a, a flat or closed top on it, drilled and tapped, so you can actually mount a, an optic on this. Uh, a, a 92, a little bit, or a 94 for that matter, a little bit more difficult. So. Um, so that's kind of a nice feature uh, for someone that likes to use an optic. Uh, you know, for me, the, the part of the um, uh, the beauty of these old rifles is to maintain a little bit of the the heritage with them. And so, even though my eyes aren't that great, I kind of choose to uh, to go open sights. Let's just talk a little bit about the open sights for for a second. Uh, the Marlin 1894 has a, a semi buckhorn on the rear. With uh, as I said, the the marbles gold bead on the front. The uh, the Winchester 92. Now this is my 357, but basically same rifle. has a has a full buck horn. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. I'm kind of juggling two things at once here. But that's a uh, that's a yeah, bang the camera yet. That's a buck horn. And uh, you know both of these with the 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 gold bead in the front. I find a little bit tough for my old eyes. Uh, the, the one that I prefer is actually the, the Kiapa. And it's, um, it's, it's got a little bit of a, a different sight on it. It's, it's got more of a traditional square notch. I don't know if any of these things are gonna focus, but uh, a square notch on this one with a, um, with a pop-up uh, ladder sight on it and a square post in the front and for whatever reason I think just because the notch is a little bit bigger on here and uh, There's a little bit of let's call it white space on either side of the the notch um, It's just a little bit easier for me to, to pick out a target behind the sight the, the difficulty that I have with my eyes um, uh, I need glasses to see distance and I'm short-sighted the other way so um, you know, a little, little bit of a fight for me. So I find this one a little bit easier. Uh, and that's just, uh, you know, again, something personal. For sure, you can change out the sights on the other two rifles. Um, but I think I'm just going to maintain them and shoot them the way they are. Let's just talk a little bit about weights. Uh, the Kiapa, since I've got it in my hand, is by far the lightest, sleekest, um, you know, narrowest uh, profile on the, uh, on, on the stock, the, the grip, the end. Uh, this one coming in at about uh, five and a half pounds, and this is a 45 Colt as well. The uh, the Winchester uh, short rifle, 
it is uh, the heaviest of the three at about six and a half pounds and uh, interesting because it's a round barrel the uh, the Marlin is a is an octagon barrel but the the Winchester is actually a little bit heavier and I, and I think everything on this rifle is just a little bit uh, beefier that being said it balances uh, pretty well right at the front of the action so there we go if I got my left hand off uh, it is a little bit barrel heavy it's got uh, a lot of meat in the barrel here the uh, the Marlin octagon barrel and so it definitely balances towards the uh, the front of the rifle the the back uh, you know and all the wood is just a little bit chunkier on Marlins I don't know if you guys have noticed that or not uh, the, the wrist here is a little bit thicker the forend is a little bit thicker so if you've got big hands you know that's going to work for you but even yeah, i've got fairly large hands but i find it compared to the other ones just a little bit more to hang on to the the receiver on the marlin is a little bit shorter about half by about half an inch uh, which is kind of interesting the way the receivers are put together so this one is definitely kind of barrel heavy and it's got an octagon as well um, although it balances kind of at the front of the receiver but when you put your hand on it in front of the the lever um, it's a little bit of a different carry. There's a little bit more receiver on the 92. So that was something to get used to in the mountains. I felt that uh, it was always kind of uh, barrel heavy for whatever reason on this one compared to, uh, to the others. And I, I did carry it for uh, quite a few miles the other day. So, uh, you know, that, that's, uh, again, just a personal preference thing. So I don't know if I gave you the weight on this one. Um, so uh, Kiapa was... Uh, five and a half this one was six Winchester six and a half the the trigger pulls on the Marlin it's uh, it's coming in at around uh, if I remember three and a half to four pounds fairly light trigger but it kind of got a little bit of a, a weird slop in here these rifles are all empty by the way I've, I've cleared them they're all safe so I'll just give you um, a little bit of a, a view of that so we got a lot of slop in that trigger fairly short trigger um, I'm going to try and I'll pull it with my left hand to give you an idea, but pretty crisp break on that. There we go. And uh, this one, as I said, came in somewhere around uh, three and a half pounds, so not uh, not bad at all for weight. Uh, I haven't honestly even checked to see if it's adjustable or not. I'll have to get into the manual a little bit, but three and a half. Uh, the Kiapa was uh, about four pounds, and the uh, the Winchester was around four and a half pounds, so the heaviest one. Uh, as far as the safety on this Marlin, it's got a, a cross hammer block safety right here, which can only be activated when the uh, when the hammer is in the half cock position. So uh, you, you've got a, a a hammer block safety there, which blocks the hammer at half cock. So again, three positions. Uh, you've got the, the hammer down which rests on the firing pin, you got a half cock and then a, a full cock position with the safety on. I'll put the safety on there for you. So the safety is off, we got a, a red uh, indicator there. The safety is on. If you pull the trigger, it basically falls to the half cock position. So you can still operate the, uh, the rifle, unload it with the safety on and the rifle in that half cock position. So there we go, half cock again safety off just pull it back a little bit and that's uh uncocked there okay so let's go ahead and load up this uh, marlin 1894 i've got once and again some american eagle 225 grain this is a jacketed soft point and i use this ammunition just because it's a bit of a, a common denominator reference point if you go into any uh sporting goods store cabela's what what have you up here this is the ammunition that you're going to find so let's go ahead and load this up and we'll see how this thing cycles so first thing uh, i'm going to do is just put it on half cock here make sure the safety's on and we'll go ahead and and load uh 10 of these into the tube here now a little bit of a different uh shape of the the loading gate here and uh and a stronger spring in the tube so that's something to kind of get used to. Almost, you can push them right in here. With my Winchesters, you, you kind of push them in three quarters of the way and then uh, push the next one behind it. But this one is very easy to push in all the way. If you leave them hanging out too far, they tend to want to back all the way out on you. So um, so that's uh, so that's why I'm, I think I'm just going to continue to push them in 
all the way and <laughs> I've literally had them come you know come flying or springing back out at me which is uh, you know it's kind of interesting and something to get used to there we go there we go one more okay so I've got 10 in the tube and uh, let's let's just go ahead and, and cycle these three these things through once again I've still got the safety on but I do have a clear field in that direction so uh, if anything untoward happens here we'll, uh, we'll we'll be safe as far as that goes so so let's go ahead cycle these through I'm not gonna go super fast uh, this action is is still a little bit um, a little bit crunchy a little little sticky uh, it hasn't really worked in yet so let's just go ahead and I don't know if you could see that uh, fairly clearly. First one chambered without any issue. There we go. That's our uh, that's our ten, and we're clear. So no issues uh, feeding and cycling for sure. So I think the next thing we're going to do here, uh, video is kind of getting a little bit long already. But let's go ahead and and fire off ten of these and uh, and see how that goes. Okay, so let's give this rifle a little bit of a workout here tonight. Got the camera repositioned so that I've got an open field in that direction. I'm not going to fire at anything in particular, but just get a sense of how the rifle feeds, functions, fires, uh, see if we have any hiccups beyond me working the lever. And, uh, and for you guys at home, just to get a little bit of a sense of what the recoil is like in a 45 Colt. So I'm going to go ahead, put the earplugs in, and uh, give this rifle a go. I've got the safety off, so uh, if you're ready, here we go. And that's 10. So there you go. Lots of fun with a 45 Colt. You know, there's a good amount of punch to it, but not so much that you're afraid to pull the trigger. And uh, you know, out of a beautiful rifle like this, that's almost as good as it gets. So I'm getting eaten by the bugs here. I'm losing the light. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Had lots of fun uh, bringing this one out here again tonight with a little bit of a closer look. So until next time, thanks for watching and take it easy.